Hi y'all, this is Regina. I'm getting ready to post some decorative fill PLF files, which are background designs or decorative fills, if you will, for use in PE Design or Palette 11 and for use in your brother or baby lock newer machines that have the ability to import custom designs into IQ Designer or My Design Center. So, <clears throat> here, they're going to be all snowflakes. There's going to be four different snowflakes. Here is snowflake one. I've imported it into a square. So, let me, let me just start over to kind of show you delete this. So I've create, I'm creating a square. I'm using a eight by eight quilt frame size hoop. And I'm going to create a square. If you hold down your shift key, well, actually on this, you don't even have to worry because it is a square that I'm using and drag it open up. You go to de decorative fills and you can pick, let me bring this up. You can pick out whichever fill you want. Okay, so mine are, mine, the file names are zero space dash ry whatever because I wanted my fills to be at the top of the list. So if you put a zero space dash in your initials when you're creating whatever and then the name of the design, it puts your design up at the top. So let me scroll down. All right, so snowflake number one, you would say, find it and click on it. There's number two, number one. Say okay, and it brings it up, and it defaults to 3.9 inches square. You need to click this maintain aspect ratio right here so that it stays the size that you want. Now this is his inches I don't do centimeters, so I keep it on inches, and you'll just have to bear with me on that. Um, this is what it looks like in 3.94 inches. If I change this to 2.50, it'll change both the height and the width because I've clicked Maintain Aspect Ratio. And I hit Enter, and it changes the size of it. Now, here's the drawback with snowflake number one. You see, hopefully you can see my cursor right here. See this little void in it? I don't know what causes that. Have no earthly idea. If you can live with it, great. If you can't, you, you'll have to use one of the other snowflakes because no matter what I do to this design or a decorative feel, let me I'm going to open up a programmable stitch creator and let me save this. I think I already have. Okay, let me pull up number one. So here is snowflake number one. You see there are no voids here, anywhere. So why it does this, I have no idea. Let me zoom in so maybe you can see it a little better so you see how it doesn't have a connection here it connects here and then four spaces over it connects again one two three it connects again one two three it connects not four i'm sorry one two three every three spaces it connects to another snowflake but it skips a line in here for some reason. So watch what happens when I go to a different snowflake. Now, rem now mind you, this is snowflake one. Let me open snowflake two and get it full screen. So here's snowflake two. If I go back over here and I go to my decorative fill over here on the right, and I scroll down to snowflake number two and say OK. It automatically comes back and defaults to 3.94. If I change it to 2.50 so I have more area filled, it connects 
the same every three points. Okay, so here's where it connects. One, two, three, it connects. One, two, three, it connects. One, two, three, it connects. The difference is, is there's no connection from point, from the side points to the side points. Okay, that's the only thing I can figure out that causes that supposed void on Snowflake 1. All right, since I've showed you these two, let me show you the others. Uh, snowflake number three, and let me get it up here. So it has no connection right along this area, which is right here. I probably need a pointer. Okay, so right along here, there's no connection. It has a circle on the inside of it. So let me go to snowflake number three. Going back over to the side. Snowflake number three. And we're going to load it. It defaults to 3.94. 3 and I'm going to change it to 2.50 to fill up more. And it looks fine too because it connects at a point here and skips over and it connects. One, two, three, it connects. One, two, three, it connects. So the only difference is those lines that go from here to here to here to here to here, to here to so on and so forth. All right, so let me go one more snowflake, number four, because I'm going to load all these to the files. So here's, let me make it bigger so you can see it. Now, the only thing in the middle of this snow, whoops, 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 it snowflake, oh, and I just saw something. I got to get rid of some lines that I had connecting. Let's see here. Get rid of that. And get rid of that. Get rid of that. And get rid of that. Okay, let me save this file. Save. Glad I hadn't uploaded that. All right, so I've taken the circle and all the other lines out on this snowflake and just left this uh, multi-point star in the center of it. So let's go load that. Go to snowflake number four, scrolling down, snowflake number four. Okay. Yeah, got rid of those lines. All right, so here again, it defaults. We go over to the right, change it to 2.50, hit enter, and that's what you get. Okay, so let me go further out. So you get a nice little snowflake design that just has the circle, the multi-point star in the center of it. Okay, so that's how you use these snowflakes in the software PE Design and Palette 11. So let me go over to the, uh, let, let me get back over to the software in my files because you need to know this too. All right, so a lot of where you're going to locate your palette 11 or your PE design is going to depend on how you loaded your software. When I load my software, I never let it default to bury it somewhere down in Windows or uh, I forget where it is that it likes to put it because I haven't let it do it in so long now. I can't remember. I think it puts it somewhere down in the, the Windows folder. I always make my fix mine so that it loads on my C drive in the file folder that uh, is for the software. So you can see, and let me go right here. Sorry. Hopefully you can see. This is my palette 11 right here. I hope you can see that well enough. In palette 11, there is a folder called patterns right here. And when I click on that, these are all the decorative fills, motifs, and what's the other? PLF, PMF, and uh, PLF, PMF, and, and PAS files. The PAS, FSR, let's see. Can't remember. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll let you know. So, you want to put the PLF files that I'm going to load in your Palette 11 folder. 
and you'll have to search and see where it is. You can come up here on the top right hand corner and click in here and type palette 11 and it'll take you it'll bring up results that show you where palette 11 is let me let me just p whoops i'm working kind of sideways here p a l e t t e all right so i'm going to search hopefully it won't take it too long while you're waiting no it's not going to show oh sorry you're going to search on your c drive sorry about that and then type P-A-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. So you want to click on your Windows C drive. Come over here to the top right in the search bar and type palette or PE design, whichever one you're going to search for, and hit enter. So it found palette 11, palette version 11 here right off the bat. It may search, have to search more for you if it's buried down in the, in the, uh, program tree. If you right click and go down to properties, it'll show you exactly where that file is located. Mine is located on the C drive in its own folder. Yours might say C colon backslash windows backslash something something something. But what you want to look for is palette 11, palette ver 11 and if you double click on that it'll open and then look for the pattern folder and this is where you want to copy your plf files that i'm getting ready to upload to the group all right so that takes care of the computer hopefully if you have any questions Post them underneath the, the, the post in the comments, and I'll try to answer them for you. Now, let me go over to... Okay, so... You also want to take that PLF file, and you want to save it to your USB drive. So, once you've unzipped that folder... And let, let me change this view details... Hopefully you can see this. I, the, well, I'm not going to load it in a zip file. Okay, scratch that. We're going to back up. We're not, I'm not going to put it in a zip file. Make it too difficult. Um, all right. So once you copy it to your patterns folder, you also want to copy it to a USB. So you're going to put in a USB drive and you're going to copy it to, you can right click, uh, copy and then right click on the USB and then say paste. Oh, do I have a USB? Hang on just a second. All right, I'm going to put my USB drive into the slot. And mine makes a little noise and tells me it's loaded. And I've already uh, put one snowflake on here. So let me scroll back up. I want to go to my C drive. You need to know what your uh, designation is on your USB drive. Okay, so I want to go back to palette 11. I'm going to go to patterns and I'm going to scroll down to the zero dash, zero space dash RY snowflake I'm going to say two because I don't have it on there. And I want to roll, scroll up on this scroll bar until I see my USB drive. And mine is Gina's stick and the designation on it was E. So I'm going to drag this, fo this file up to my USB stick to where it's highlighted. See, it does as I go up, it highlights different folders, and I'm going to let go. And that just copied my Snowflake 2, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it a different way. I've got Snowflake 3 here. I highlight it, right-click, copy, and I go to my USB, and I click on it, right-click, paste, and it pastes that third Snowflake. So now I've got to go scroll back up 
because I did it that way. I'm going to click on C. I'm going to go down to Palette version 11. I'm going to click on the folder called Patterns, and I'm going to scroll back down to the file that I want to move, which is Snowflake 4. Okay. And this time, I'm just going to drag it. i got to go scroll down on, with this scroll bar, and I'm going to find Gina's stick. USB designation is E, and I'm going to click and hold the mouse button and drag this over and let go. And now when I click, I have Snowflake 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, so now I right click and I go to eject, to eject the USB. You always want to right click on the file designation for your USB and scroll down to eject. If you don't do that, you could mess up your USB and then have to format it or sometimes it just flat messes it up and you can't even use it. All right, so now let's go over to the machine. All right, so I'm at the machine. I have this little cord that plugs in to the USB port over here on the side and it has a connection like your computer does for the USB to stick in. It's better to do this and to have this cord laying here all the time, taking in the USB uh, stick, than to be taking it in and out, in and out, in and out of your machine. That way you don't wear the USB port on your machine out. Okay, so I'm gonna stick my USB uh, stick in that connection, lay it down. We're going to go to IQ Designer or My Design Center. You're going to click on the the um, on the fill. Let me use my mouse. And I do. I have a mouse. If you don't have a mouse, oh, you need a mouse. Trust me. I tried to use this thing without a mouse, and it just about drove me crazy. All right, so we're going to go to your, sorry, got to roll over there. So this is your line properties, and then this is your fill properties. I think that's called, I can't remember. I just do it. And you're going to click here. You're going to go to your patterns box right here, and you're going to click select. You're going to go to custom, and you want to go to your little pocket up here at the top right and click the pocket and you want to make sure that you click on your USB drive right the one on the left hand side this one on the right is for my mouse all right you should see the four files that you've copied to your USB so I'm going to click uh, I wonder, does it let me? No, it doesn't. Okay, so you have to do this one at a time. You're going to click on one, and you're going to say, okay. You're going to go back to the pocket. You're going to click on the second one. And you're going to say, okay. You're going to go back to the pocket, click on the third one, and say, okay. You're going to go back to the pocket, click on the fourth one, and say, okay. So now, here are the... Uh, the four files. I'm going to click on this one. Let's see here. Can I get rid of that? No. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to see how to get rid of that. Let's see. Hit cancel. Because you can get... I don't want to clear all. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So once you get it on there, you can't just delete one. That's a flaw. Okay. All right, so here's the four snowflakes, the four different snowflakes in here. We're going to say, okay, and we're going to say, okay, and we're, gonna, we're going to um, get a shape, and I'm going to just get a rectangle and say, okay, uh, I'm going to go to my properties, and I'm going to change the size of my hoop to well, let's just pick nine and a half by nine and a half and I'm going to go to my 
properties, my fill properties, and I'm going to go to the decorative patterns and say select, and I'm going to pick this first one that looks like it's missing a spoke on it, so to speak. Okay, I'm going to click it and say okay. I'm going to pick red, red, and say okay. And then I'm going to get my fill bucket, and I'm going to click over here. So there is your decorative fills in here. Now, if you want to change the size, you've got to come in here, and let's decrease it by 50%. And there it is. There's your fill. So let's just say, let's just say 65%. Okay, so there's your decorative snowflake fill. So now you could do whatever you wanted in, in this. If you want to put an embroidery design on top of here, you could. I would change the size then to, uh, and you could only go 50%. In the software, you can go more than 50%. But on the machine, you can only go 50%. And you'd say set, say okay, and there's your your decorative fill. If you were just making a, a mug rug or a hot pad or something like this, you wouldn't, you may not want to do anything more than that. So that's how you can use those decorative fills. All right. If you have any questions, post them below. I'll try to answer. Thanks for watching.